In popular imagination, the term Viking conjures up images of fierce, blonde-haired, blue-eyed men sailing the seas and plundering coastal towns. But were the Vikings really the purebred race that some people would like to believe? Finally, evolutionary geneticists have some answers. It all kind of got kicked uh, off uh, when we managed to sequence the first ancient human genome because that gave us an enormous amount of data from single individuals that we can use to infer the human past. After we saw, well, this is possible, we decided, well, let's go and explore, you know, the human past in the world. How did we became who we are today? Over a period of six years, researchers analyzed human remains found at more than 80 archeological sites, including Viking burials. To understand the past through ancient DNA, the team sequenced the genomes of 442 men, women, children and babies from the Viking age. So first, of course, we have to pick up, you know, bones, teeth, archaeological remains that we want to analyze. We and others have found that, that really the best possible material that we can use in terms of preservation of the DNA would be maybe the teeth, so we sample a lot of teeth, or then there's this other bone that is called the petrous bone, which is this inner ear bone, which is a very, very hard bone that also preserves the human DNA really, really well. You know, you take that tooth, you cut it up, uh, usually we cut off the root uh, and then and then drill into it and then you get this powder and then you use that to extract DNA from the sample and then prepare it in the laboratory for eventually going to the sequencing machine. The researchers then compared these ancient people's DNA with already published DNA sequences from nearly 4,000 modern day people and from more than 1,000 ancient individuals. The typical Viking, right, is portrayed as a blonde big, strong, blonde Scandinavian. But you know, blondness was actually less common in the Viking period than it is in Scandinavia today. This largest ever DNA analysis of Viking remains has shown that they carried genes from Southern Europe and Asia. The Viking period we can see is, you know, it's characterized by an enormous interest in the world from the Viking Scandinavians but a very limited interest for what is actually going on in Scandinavia. Their trade routes extended from Canada to Afghanistan, making the Vikings more diverse than previously thought. This intermingling with people from the South and the East diversified their genetic makeup and led to a variety of physical appearances. You know, you couldn't really say there was a homogeneous group that was very, you know, just, just the Scandinavian people that, that, you know, looked the same everywhere genetically. There was actually quite a lot of diversity. Then we can see that the different Viking groups primarily went to different areas around the world. So we can see that the Danes primarily went to England. The Norwegians, they went to Ireland, Iceland, and Greenland. And the Swedes went to the Baltic. The study also suggests that the Viking identity wasn't related to genetic background or ethnicity. It was more of a social identity. The Viking phenomena is not only a Scandinavian thing, in the sense that it's not ethnicity that determines whether you're Viking or not. It's, it's a lifestyle. So we find Vikings, you know, that has no Scandinavian genetics. So they come in all kinds of different forms. So for example, we had these cases of, 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 of individuals from, from, uh, from Scotland, from the Orkney Islands, where from, from all their archaeological context and the burials were associated with the Viking culture. But genetically, they very much uh, resembled to be the, the kind of earlier indigenous uh, Scottish population. By doing this research, of course, we're changing the story. And by changing the story, we are also changing our identity. I see it as something positive in the sense that at least the debate of identity, which is also a political debate, at least it's based on real science. So I think it's important for that debate to have this kind of research.